about a minute ago, the president tweeting, he just had a long and very good conversation with President Xi of China, talked about many subjects with a heavy emphasis on trade. Those discussions are moving along nicely with meetings being scheduled with the G20 in Argentina, also had a good discussion on North Korea. So, Got a little lift there in the yeah, markets. Perhaps some positive reflections, although, frankly, we've seen <laughs> tweets of a similar type in the past, only to be met with more resistance in terms of both parties. Hard to know. I mean, how do you know, Gabriella, what's going on? You read tweets, you, you see reports, they're preparing more tariffs, things are going nicely. It's very hard to, to make bets in the market on all of this, isn't it? It is hard to know exactly how the trade tensions get resolved or perhaps do not get resolved. Um, and that's why I think it's important to start thinking about which asset classes have priced in this kind of trade tension and maybe even escalation. I would argue that something like emerging markets has gotten quite beaten down already, perhaps reflecting the worst case scenario when you look at equities, when you look at FX. Um, so maybe there is some opportunity in some asset classes that have already reflected uh, this increased risk of trade tensions. Sean, if they make a deal, big if, what would happen to the market? And if they don't make a deal, say by the end of the year, what would happen to the market? I think if they make a deal, it goes up. But certainly, it's what, what is the substance of the deal? I mean, if we look at the Chinese, they play in decades. They don't play in kind of yearly thought process. So I think the deal would be watered down at best. Um, so I think it has an initial pop and then goes down. I mean, what the market does to the end of the year, who knows? I think it's you know relatively flat to down a little bit. Um, it's just what is the expectation going forward in the marketplace for earnings? And that's going to be the real challenge. And revenue growth is going to have to come down because we're relying too much on the consumer to drive real growth in the, the economy. And that's going to be a challenge going forward because the consumer, as we all know, in the U.S. will spend every dollar he gets at some point in time. But eventually, you can't spend what you don't have, right? So that's going to be the challenge. The housing market has rolled over a little bit. Autos have rolled over. And, and that's going to be a, a, a real challenge as far as wage so, pressure. But, but consumption's running at four. And you can get a job across the street for more money like it's nothing. Correct. Right? But, if, but if, if you have... Consumption is going up, but all of a sudden, think about housing is rolling over, autos are rolling over. You have major parts of tech is rolling over in some ways. So all of a sudden, if those parts of the economy aren't doing well, those jobs will go away at some point. So that's going to be the real test. I mean, there's been no evidence of that in continuing claims whatsoever, right? I mean, well, that's, that's what happens in a recession. All of a sudden, you know, you go from a great economy to not. Right? I think it's perhaps a little difficult to sustain three and a half, four percent pace of consumption next year. Not necessarily saying that it rolls over completely and that we get a recession already next year. But I mean, if we just think about some of the fading fiscal stimulus that the consumer was uh, looking at as a, as a tailwind this year, next year it becomes a little bit tougher. So we do expect consumption to moderate, growth to moderate. It's all about resetting those expectations. I'm just looking at the market. I mean, there is clearly now a sharp reaction to the president's tweet saying that it was productive with Xi, President Xi on trade. I mean, straight line up. Dow's up 150 points right now. We were at risk of going negative just as we began the conversation, talking up China. I mean, it brings up another issue, Sean, which is something we've been aware of. The president watches the market. The president watches business news. The president judges himself in many ways by how the market is performing. We just came off the worst October for stocks in years. Think he's jawboning here? Sure. I think he's trying to get the market up as much as he possibly can. He really does look at his credibility associated with the market, so I agree with that. Um, the last couple of days of the month of October really were people trying to push their positions as, as hard as they could to actually make a horrible month look a little bit better. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the first few days of this month. I wonder then if the bulls would say, look, he's not going to let a deal fall through with China because the market's important to him. and. Although, as you said earlier, a deal on what? Uh, is it a bilateral trade deficit? Is it buying more soy? Is it industrial policy, state capitalism model, right? I mean, it's not been defined what the goals are. I am sure China would do a deal right now buying more products from the U.S. and make that the, you know, epicenter of the deal and nothing else. And they would be thrilled. So at some point, Trump has to do a deal because he's going to want to get reelected as well. So and he's going to want the market to do well. So I think we'll probably bend a little bit. China will move in a little bit and we'll have some sort of deal. It won't be anything that's longer term in nature. This is a long term fight and it's not a short term win that's going to happen they by anyone. He had offered to, of course, buy more products. Sure. It was not enough initially.
Uh, I don't know. There are, and many people who believe this could actually linger on for quite some time. We get to 25 percent beginning of the year, and there are any number of, I think, people, at least I speak to, who believe this could be the new normal, uh, that we don't really resolve this dispute. If that is the case, do you discount anything for a longer period of time in terms of the way you value? I think perhaps China is gearing itself up for a longer fight, right? We've seen them do a variety of stimulus measures over the past few months to try to create a floor in their economy for 2019, should this go on. And there's where I go back to the idea of perhaps a lot of emerging market assets have already discounted this fight going on for a long time. Perhaps we start getting some good news out of Chinese economic data, perhaps even if the trade fight lingers, perhaps that provides some sort of confidence boost to emerging market assets come 2019. That's some comfort I take that China has been preparing its economy for, for this fight.